and welcome, dear fountain pen, ink, and paper loving friends. My name is Doug, and I'm coming to you from Albuquerque in New Mexico, but I'm also coming to you from the last bits of my quarantine. Yes, I did come down with um, COVID, and I have been pretty much in my bedroom uh, this um, for the past week. But um, even though you can probably still hear it a little bit, um, I am much, much better. I think for about four days, I really was feeling quite bad, like when you come down with a bad cold. But now gradually, uh, I'm really over it and well, I just have to make sure that I pace myself and give myself plenty of rest in between because at some point, like two days ago, I felt like, hey, this is over. I can party and do all the things that need to be done around the house. But no, I shouldn't have because yesterday I felt like resting all day long. Um, but that's not what you are here for. I have been um, wanting to record another uh, fountain pen related episode for quite some time. I thought I want to do a, a currently inked because that's really what I like to watch a lot when I get the chance on YouTube. And of course, also with currently um, the 30 inks, 30 days going on, where I, which I um, watch uh, daily. Um, I'm even more hyped about um, talking ink and talking pens. But I thought I'd start off with um, my location. Like I said, this is in my bedroom. However, um, behind me, you see something that people who have known me in Germany will e even recognize because this is a vintage desk that my dad had restored for me. <clears throat> Not had restored, he did it himself. So he restored this for me and it's been a treasure ever since. Um, I want to say maybe 30, 35 years that I've had it now. And um, as you can see, it has ample storage below <clears throat> where I keep all kinds of things. And up here on each side, the three drawers and in the middle, this little compartment and another drawer. <clears throat> A wonderful surface here. However, I wish I could, but I do not use this for writing anymore because it's just getting really fragile and I am worried about doing damage when I lean on the desk to write. So it's more for my visual enjoyments and storage, of course, of paper related things mainly. I want to tell you about, like I said, my currently inked fountain pens, but also um, just so you know, when I talk about my desk where I write, it's usually not this desk, but a fairly large computer, computer desk in my office here in the house. And um, that's also where I have my, um, one of my treasure items with fountain pens is sitting there. Um, it's something that I picked up on a trip, just like some other memorabilia up here. But this one is really very dear to me. I haven't had it for that long, but it's really just so wonderful for fountain pens. And what I keep in there, I will show you in a close-up in a minute. It's uh, two pens that my husband gifted me and one that I got from my brother. 
And if you are curious about my pen storage, which maybe you are because I'm always curious, I am, hold on. Usually I like to be flexible with my fountain pens because sometimes I go outside to write in the mornings, letters, journaling, whatever. And so I want my pens portable. I never carry around the crocodile dish, but I have all my other inked pens in cigar boxes and my journals and notebooks are in this very heavy wooden box but um so if i need them all accessible i can carry those around in my house i have a new currently inked notebook tomori river and like i said my cigar boxes and i I am skipping one of those boxes because my Schaefer student pens, I would probably, that, that would just make for a, for a video that is too long. If that is something that interests you, uh, I can certainly do another video. In these boxes, I keep my Twisby Ecos and all the other random bits are in this larger box. And funny story, the other day I was expecting the new transparent yellow Twisby Eco as well as the Twisby Eco Lilac. And I ordered both of these from Pen Realm with a free custom custom uh, nib tuning, which is kind of super amazing. And um, I, took, I was talking to my daughter, that was actually before I got sick, because she managed not to catch it so far, and she's taken such great care of my husband and myself. But um, back to the Twisby Eco Box. So I was talking to her and because she asked me, so what's new in terms of pens? And I said, well, I've ordered two more pens, told her. And then I showed her the box and I said, well, when these are gonna be here, the box is gonna be full. And you will see in the second one, we have the desk view. And she said, oh no, then you can't get any more of those pens. I said, oh no, no not gonna happen. I'm just gonna have to get a bigger box. <laughs> All right, let's go to the desk, which in this case is my, um, is a nightstand. Well, not mine, but my husband's, which is nice and empty. See you over there. Here's my favorite pen dish again with the Caveco Bras with a double broad nib. And the Esterbrook SD Gold Rush and the Lamy 2000 with a double broad oblique nib. All favorite writers, favorite pens because of where they came from. My brother, my husband, my husband. <clears throat> Even though there, technically there should be a pen that my son gifted me. <laughs> it should be in here, but whatever. Okay, let's get started. This is my currently inked and hold on. I recently had filled up my old currently inked notebook. And so this time around, I chose a Tomoy River that I had just ordered. Usually I decorate the covers a little bit more. I haven't gotten around to that yet. And it has graph paper, which I love. I did decorate the first page with ink splats and um, actually these smudges were done with a small pocket knife. I just wanted to experiment a little bit. 
And with the these ink splats, what I usually do, I put on a heavy drop and then I blow, which I wouldn't do right now. I probably get out of breath too quickly. So I haven't done a lot in here so far, but um, let's get started with the Kaveco Bras. So I did want to mention that um, some people love the Kaveco Sports for traveling, and my friend Sherry just asked me what I think about that, and I thought it's a great size for a lightweight pen to travel. However, if you want to test a Kaveco, this would be another option. It holds two cartridges in the back here. One more would fit in here. Yes, I do have cartridges because the converters are way too small. Kaveco converters. This one does have a, a double B nib. And yes, this is what I do a lot. I do not ever cap my fountain pens, even though this one would go, would even screw on here. Don't like that. A lot of times I start writing, holding this in my hand, and then I realize it and I'll put it down. I never cap them. Okay. hope this nightstand doesn't shake too, too much. I can tell it does a little bit, but that's my only option. Plus the lighting is so nice. So this is inked with Shagaba Olive Green, which is a great color. Should have done this ahead of time. Yes, and you may have guessed it. I love me a broad nib. If you haven't watched any of my paper talks, this is going to be news to you, but now you know. <laughs> broad, double broad, or this is really, oh my goodness. I tried this at the Lamy flagship store in San Francisco last year when we were traveling. And it writes like butter on hot glass. It's absolutely fabulous. And I inked it with sailor of virginia which is kind of meaningful because it was a gift from my husband and because we used to live in maryland and traveled a lot in virginia absolutely love this pen this guy with a medium writer's nib See how I hit the hit the Virginia there. <laughs> Carried some of that color. I have inked this with <clears throat> Wait a minute. I want to make sure. Is it color verse? Yes, it is color verse. Right 
rising reflections. Alrighty. And now on to the Twisbees. When I choose inks, I, especially with my Twisby Ecos, I usually go for a color that either, yeah, most of them kind of like are a match, or in this case, um, my son has the same pen, and so I wanted something that made me think of him, and that's the ink uh, um, Parrotfish by Van Diemen's. <clears throat> Okay, all of my Twisby Ecos are uh, have a bee nib. And what I like about them is that they have a big ink capacity. All of these are always inked. And all of these, like I said, have a bee nib, and all of them are inked with a shimmer ink. Some of them are eco teas. I watched Manda be the other day and she said that she was hoping that they were coming out eventually um, with a, a pinkish, transparent pink, more pink um, color of the Twisby Eco, Eco. And I thought, yes, that would have been absolute, absolutely my my uh, choice too. If I, had a, if I could ha wish for a color, that would totally be it. This is Ferris Wheel Press, a, a winter one, I think it was, Wonderland and Coral. Sometimes I switch colors, like I have a another red shimmer ink, which I like to put in here, but right now it had to be this one because I hadn't used it yet. This is one that I always keep in this one. Most of my shimmers are diamine inks. citrus ice. Here's my new baby, the <clears throat> transparent yellow. Why did I say transparent yellow here? Wrong. This was transparent orange, of course. Why didn't you say so? <laughs> oh my gosh, this ink is fantastic. Here we go, yellow. 
and this is inked with Pelican Edelstein, Pelican Edelstein. Golden Barrel. I recently did get another uh, Pelican pen and that one came with the Golden Barrel ink. Okay. transparent green is inked with diamine golden oasis Still on frame, yes, you are. This is Diamond Blue Lightning. I never have trouble with these. Um, in regards to hard starts or anything like this amazing pens really a great great ability to deal with shimmer inks as you're going to be able to notice um, but also I had not used them in months and had no trouble with hard starts I remove them here and uh, this is the only one that, wait a second, oh no, it's the lilac one. Never mind, not this one. I have two purple shimmer inks, and the, this is the one that I prefer. I love this color. Not sure what the correct name for this guy is, the all clear, all transparent one. It's inked up with Colorverse Brain. I had seen it on Mandabee's channel and I fell in love so incredibly hard. I love this color so much. And then white. This was a gift from a friend. Stay in my moon dust. <clears throat> I do have another shimmer gray, which is lighter, which I'm going to put in when I'm done with this one, just switching, just to switch them around. And here is 
die in pastel blue and the ink is diamond spearmint diva Oh, the order is so off. Oh, well, okay. Gonna do the other T to the other T now. Diamond Razzmatazz. Another one that I really, really love. And I will show you the close-up in a second. Now this is another fairly new one. The, the Jade, of course. I had also gotten this from Kirk at Pen Realm with a free nib tuning. And the ink is Ferris Wheel Press, misguided mistletoe. A fantastic color. Oh yeah, if you hear work in the background, we're having some work done, done by our garage today. And I still have the windows open. You may even be able to hear the cicadas, which are so noisy this year. This is the, the lilac, I think it's called. And I inked it with Robert Oster Violet Clouds. And last but certainly not least, my black one. I must say that this is the only ink that sometimes gives this pen a hard start or gives any of the Twisby Egos a hard start. So I don't know if that may have just more shimmer particles, different shimmer particles. Hard to guess what causes it. And this is Van Diemen's Parrotfish. And my son has the same fountain pen. And these were all the Twisby Ecos. And I hope you can see. That's this, and here is <clears throat> the second box. Let's open this, sorry. Okay, let's see what's in here. Two things that shouldn't 
don't technically belong in here. Sometimes I draw a little bit and I fill in with any of the pens and then I wash out the ink. That's why these are here. This is waterproof. It won't wash away, as most of you probably know. And this is a Pilot parallel pen, which I sometimes use to address my letters. <clears throat> And that was a cartridge that was in here. Actually, I don't use it for the whole address, but just to write the name of the person. And it is, in case you wonder, it's the 2.4 millimeter. If you've watched these before, you may remember that I was really upset because I used this brand new fountain pen, Kaviko Sport, um, during Inkvent. I had actually saved it up and when I inked it, it didn't want to write. And I have since fixed it. However, I must say that it always has hard starts. <laughs> always, if I haven't used it in a little bit. There you go. That's what I thought. And this is a waterproof ink. I messed around hardcore with this nib to open it up to get it better, to get better ink flow, to have it smoother in the front. I mean, it was, I really, I was so upset about it not writing the way it was supposed to as a new fountain pen that I really um, let my anger <laughs> take the better of me and um when i hacked the nib but it it works i think the now the problem is really this ink and but that's okay i usually i i also use this to to write the address on envelopes <clears throat> This was too painful. Had to take care of it right away. Of course, it's more watery now as it should be. The ink color, Cavico Sports. Um, neon orange demo. The double broad nib and this is noodlers Rahman enough I have really tried to focus on going through my inkvent pens and inks and these are the last ones that are still left with ink in them. Almost, almost done. Even though I have to say one of them I cheated a little bit. I 
made and I, I did a dog mix. So, no, this is the second. Okay. This is a Pelican 25 with a beautiful... oblique medium nib the pen is vintage and it's one of those that i bought many years ago in germany probably at the flea market pentagon 25 with Oh, I'm hooded, of course, as you can see here for yourself. And this is the Inkvent number nine, Storm Shimmer. Pretty much out. Not much left. So this is one of the Schaefer pens that I like so much because they're such reliable writers. And I'm taking pictures out here. Hi. I'm This one has an M nib and it's number 13, Ruby Blues. Sorry about the, <clears throat> about having to interrupt. And Next one is my, one of my favorites is a, it's a platinum 3776 in the color Chartres Blue. with a music nib. And this is number 14, Red Robin. This was really one of the inks that, this was one of my favorites. And I have to say that um, I, a lot of the ones that had a lot of sheen gave me trouble in the pens with heart starts and stuff like that. Oh, I did want to show you a close up of the nib. Great writer, yeah. Yeah, but this a very uncomplicated, wonderful colored ink. Aurora 88. And that has a B nib, <clears throat> even though that doesn't write like a B pen. <laughs> B nib, I think. It's number 16, vintage copper. 
And if I had to pick one of all of the ink vent colors as a favorite, this would be it. Ah, but then again, pink ice also. Ooh, yum, yum, yum. And to get back to the Twisby Eco's probably no possible future colors, how nice would pink ice be in a transparent pink Twisby Eco, right? <laughs> so number 16 is vintage copper. And you can see what great what a great pen this is. I mean, I'm talking, I'm having it open, it has shimmer ink in it, and no problem. It starts writing right away. And this was a gift from my husband when our son was born, by the way. Yeah, in case you wonder. And one day that's gonna be his, of course. Another Schaefer demonstrator, and here I did a wild mix because I'm not I'm not normally too big of a fan of darker colors. So with this one, it was initially a dark color, and I added some Aurora und Klingner Helianthus, which is sunflower, about half of it. A lot of, no, all of my Schaefer student pens I have by now eyedropper filled and I seal the threads with silicone, as you probably know, but still want to mention it. And this is a 305 nib, and I'm pretty sure it's the same as a medium nib. So this is black 22 black ivy. And you can see it's still super duper dark. And I added Wara und Klingner. And another interruption. Sorry about that. My daughter needed me. So, back to pens. Can't see too much, right? I think this kind of sticks to the body of the of the pen. And here is the last one, which is probably my finest fountain pen. I would assume it's a 149 Mont Blanc. And it was an anniversary edition for the, for 75 years of passion and soul. but it doesn't give the number I'm just not sure This was, of course, number 25, all the best. Uh, sorry, this table is a little wiggly. I didn't say which nib, but I'm thinking it's a B nib. It doesn't say on here. Now, 
on to the rest of this gang. In general, I did want to tell you when I choose fountain pens and inks, like I said, I try to match the color, but I do not always do that. And I do not choose a color palette in general. It's more like, hey, I got a new ink. I want to put it in a pen. Which pen would work with that? Not always very a very sophisticated system. There are a few that I have. Um, there are a few that I have specifically chosen for specific inks that will stay that way. And, well, maybe not, <laughs> but um, let me go from left to right again. This is the um, Esterbrook SDC glass with a writer's nib, M nib. I think the writer's nibs are always mediums. And this had to be inked in a matching color. And in this case, it's the Soft Mint by Diamine. Move the box so we get more light. This is my other new pen. It's a Pelican, I think it's an M200. And it's the, is it called Golden Burial? I hope I'm not telling nonsense here. And it is not inked with Golden Burial. B-nib. This is Rora und Klingner. <laughs> I should spell. Liantus. Which means sunflower. This is a very lightweight material in case you wonder. I don't know. I just notice that every time I pick it up because I don't expect it to be so light. Here comes its heavy duty um, counterpart. This is a Delta Gladiator, a limited edition 46 of 100. And um, it's just an amazing pen. However, I used to ink it with the Delta ink that came with it. And I probably didn't clean it properly. And since, since then, um, I have had so much trouble. It would just not write and give me so many issues. And from time to time, I give it another good cleaning with cleaning liquid and... I think I may have solved the problem just um, recently, finally. Come on, are you gonna get sharp? Foc are you gonna get sharp, yes. Are you gonna focus? Oh my gosh, that was such horrible English. <laughs> 
Okay. Well. Oh, I didn't realize this was empty. <clears throat> Never mind then. I put in an ink that is known to be very... No, it's really done. It doesn't look that way. A very wet ink. Check. Hi. Oh, yes. Noodler's Apache Sunset, which is now renamed Southwest Sunset, as I've just found out. Okay, so I may re ink it with that. And here we go with another Lamy 2000. This baby is so old. Look at this. This doesn't do anything. Has a piston filler like my new one, but oh my gosh, this can probably be fixed. But I don't know how, and it doesn't affect how it writes. It has written on the body that it's an MNIB which I'm very certain only the old ones do. And And this is don't want to mess up the name. Shikurin. Shikurin. I wonder if there was any kind of ink residue in this pen because I don't think this color should be so dark, but. It is what it is, and so let's move on. When I started with the with the paper duck paper talk, I already showed you this pen, and it it was it had a very fine nib, and I remember getting it at the flea market. Heidi from Malcolm Malcolm engraved, and I keep agonizing about the story. Did Heidi break up with Malcolm? Malcolm or Malcolm with Heidi? And what happened to Heidi and Malcolm? Yeah. And this is a Schaefer, which I don't know the model of this Schaefer, but um, you possibly will remember that the body of this used to be black. And... Um, I showed it to someone who works with pens and it turned out um, because it was such a dry writer. And he said, it's probably a problem of the body that um, got a heat damage. Not by me, by the way. So let me see if I figured out the model of this guy. Yeah. If you know what pen this is, please do let me know because it could be an imperial stylist. Uh, let's call it. Yes, and you can tell now this guy is writing. I mean, it, the problem is definitely fixed. So this part was exchanged and of course not the beautiful, gorgeous nib. I'm gonna say Imperial. And it has an, a fine nib. Shizuku Konpeki. So 
So if you can tell me what model this is, I'd appreciate it. Here is one of my favorite pens of all times, a vintage Pelican 400. And it does have damage on the body, which I don't know where that came from. I probably acquired it this way, but it doesn't do the writing experience any, any harm. And I just love this pen. I used to have it inked with... with, um, gosh, now I'm drawing a blank, Papier Plume, Olive Green, no, Moss Green, Moss Green is the name, and, um, but then I'm, I'm still, it's not, still not the perfect color for the pen, so now I have tried, um, Sailor Ink Studio, <clears throat> Pelican 400 with a beautiful medium oblique nib, which writes like a dream. number 162 let's make sure i'm not making things up where are you yes so and i was telling you about the olive green green in here before because i'm thinking it's also it shouldn't be that light it shouldn't be that dark it should be lighter but it is what it is. It it doesn't really bother me, you know, because then I feel it again and next time it's going to be better. All right, clean it in between. This is a new Parker Vector, which I had this one from the, probably from the 80s. I think it was one of the pens that I had purchased as an original. And then I heard from watching Waski Squirrel's channel and he was talking about these and that they're still available and so I bought this purple one but let's start with the one that I've had <clears throat> from way back when I assume it's an M nib and goodness, I can't I'm not sure what's in here. Oh yes. It's a mix. I had a cartridge. That was kind of partway dried up and I added Diamine Holly. No wonder I don't remember. <laughs> and this I filled with Waterman Purple. I know it because it matches exactly the color of the pen, the body of the pen. Oh, is it a K? I think it's spelled with a K. Is it? I think so. Now comes another gorgeous Mont Blanc Meisterstück, which turned out it's not a Mont Blanc Meisterstück, but a 
fake, which nonetheless writes like a dream. So I just call it my fake Mont Blanc. I call this a beanie, but I'm thinking it may almost be a stub. And I think this was also an ink mix. Let's just make sure. Yes, it's another one where I mixed something with Diamine Holly. Let's hope that, oh no, there's still ink in here. This is a Twisby mini demonstrator. And I had inked it with something that um, was too dry for this nib. So I added something else and now I have another ink mix. This one has a stub nib. I'm just going to say this is a mix. Yep. That's that. And... As you can see, the Pilot Parallel still isn't dry. Very annoying. Don't know why, but so next time I'm going to, it's a cartridge that's in there. So I'm probably just going to refill the cartridge with, with something else. I hope you enjoyed this and I certainly enjoyed it. I haven't done any of these, oh my gosh, since Inkvent. So this was really fun to do. And I will see you again very shortly with knitting, with a knitting themed podcast. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.